Hello everyone, welcome back to Zombie Zoology. I'm Zombie Zebra and this is a continuation of my video series on the 2017 classification update to the Ehlers-Danlos Syndromes. This video is going to be based on the article Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome Classical Type, which will be linked below. We will obviously be talking about the classical type of EDS. So let's dive in. The first section of note that I found was the organ system review, where they go through system by system and talk about how Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, the classical type, affects them. So first is joint hypermobility. This is pretty standard across Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, but both big and little joints tend to be hypermobile. This is the musculoskeletal system. Skin involvement is key to the classical EDS, so things like the hyperextendable skin where you have cheeks that can pull out to here, and soft velvety skin are both characteristics common in classical type EDS. Cardiovascular involvement is seen but not clinically significant. Cardiovascular involvement I believe will be seen more in CVEDS and VEDS, but it is not so common in classical type. The gastrointestinal involvement is more common in hypermobile EDS but is also possible and the neurologic condition. All Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome types have pain, but in classical, it is largely more mild than hypermobile. This is just a generalization. It does not mean that every single person who has classical EDS has it easier than every single person who has hypermobile EDS. It is not a competition between the types here. I am just reading what they wrote in the article. Literature review. The literature was divided into eight themes. The history of classical EDS, the mechanisms of the disease, the clinical description, the testing strategy, the management, differential diagnoses, genetic counseling, and gaps in future research. Classical EDS is a heritable disorder of connective tissue characterized by skin hyperextendability, poor wound healing, and joint hypermobility. Classical EDS was first noted to be a distinct type of EDS in the late 1960s when Byton reviewed 100 patients and described a patient with distinct features which he termed EDS gravis. Info about the specific genes I'm not going to get into because there's a long string of numbers and letters that mean nothing to me. If it's the kind of thing you're interested in, again, the article is linked down below. The mechanism of the disease. The key to classical EDS is the reduction in the amount of type V collagen, which is type 5. As I've said previously, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a connective tissue disorder, and your connective tissue is much like a woven basket. Every one of the little pieces woven together matters. There are lots of different types of protein woven together for our connective tissue. Type V collagen is the type that is affected by Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome classical type. Now, if you know anything about a wicker basket, you know that if one little piece gets frayed, it can all come apart. So just saying that one protein is effective doesn't mean that it doesn't affect everything because just one weakness in that protein does affect everything. So. Collagen V is what you are looking for and what you can blame there. The clinical description of classical EDS. The Villafranchi criteria listed three major criteria for classical EDS. Skin hypersendability, widened atrophic scars, and joint hypermobility. This next section is what I was most excited about with this new information update, and that is the update to the management information. I'm, what I'm about to read off is a lot of advice given by the journal to people who may have classical EDS, both for managing as a doctor and managing as a patient. So here's the advice from the American Journal of Medical Genetics. Avoid undue trauma. Obviously, if you are easy bruising and your blood vessels rupture easily, you don't want to be in any sort of contact sport or any situation where you're going to get hit repeatedly. Wounds should be expertly closed via sutures without tension. Patients should be known to their local plastic surgeons to enable access in emergencies. Stitches should be applied generously in layers and left in place twice as long as usual. Sewing up EDS scans can sometimes be described as trying to sew up jello or like a thin piece of paper. Just stitches aren't going to hold that together because that skin pulls apart. It's not going to matter what's in the middle, just the sides are going to rip. So you have to be very careful when stitching up. Some people find they prefer glue or all these other kind of innovative ways of closing wounds. Basically, everybody's skin is different, especially with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So it is a good idea to be known to surgeons in your town beforehand so that if you come in with some sort of emergency, they already know how to handle you. The journal recommends ascorbic acid, two grams a day for adults. They say this may reduce bruising, but it does not affect the base clinical picture. So basically it'll lighten symptoms but it's not going to cure it. There is no cure for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome that we know of at this time. 
You should also avoid excessive sun exposure to reduce the risk of premature skin aging. Since your skin is stretchy and it is very thin and light, it, it ages much quicker and you will get those wrinkles from that skin being pulled out. They also recommend physiotherapy and it's beneficial for children with hypotonia and delayed motor development. You also want light, non-weight bearing muscle strengthening exercises such as isometric training and swimming. These are beneficial for hypermobile joints and pain management. Joint hypermobility is best managed by rheumatology, sports medicine, and an occupational therapist. There are all sorts of different kinds of therapies and doctors I recommend you have in your arsenal when you have classical EDS or really any type. Pain management, this is obviously a very touchy subject. You want to be on anti-inflammatory drugs as well as pain medication. If at all possible, you want to avoid being on narcotics. Obviously, we have a huge issue with opioid addiction in our country, and there are lots of people who abuse op opioids. So if you are on any sort of opioid, please, please only use it as prescribed because that is a very, very slippery slope. Next is the differential diagnoses. These are things that often get mistaken for classical EDS, so things you might also want to evaluate yourself for if you are moving in the classical direction. And these are cardiac valvular EDS, classical-like EDS, SEDS, which is the Spondylodes Plastic EDS, and Louis Dietz Syndrome. Genetic Counseling Classical EDS is passed down in a dominant fashion, meaning that affected individuals have a 50% chance of passing the condition on in each pregnancy. The major criteria are significant skin hyperextendability and atrophic scarring. Two, generalized joint hypermobility. I went over a lot of this criteria in my hypermobility video, so feel free to go watch that if you need clarification on that. And the minor criteria are easy bruising, soft doughy skin, skin fragility, molluscoid, pseudotumors, subcutaneous spheroids, hernia, epicanthal folds, or family history of a first degree relative who meets the clinical criteria. Minimal criteria suggested for a diagnosis of EDS, Major criteria, one, skin hyperextendability and atrophic scarring, plus either major criteria, two, the generalized joint hypermobility, or three of the nine minor criteria. Confirmatory analysis of the genetics is recommended for any patient meeting the above clinical criteria. Their gaps in future research section basically seem to say, we're still open to and learning about everything. So I'm not gonna go through exactly what they said because it basically covered the whole article. So take solace in that, the whole thing is still kind of up in the air. This is a continuing research project. This is not a one-time information dump and move on. There's a lot still to learn. And finally, the summary they gave at the end, that a diagnosis of classical EDS is indicated by the well-described triad of hyperextendable skin, atrophic scarring, and hypermobile joints. Although a set of clinical criteria has predominated di diagnosis, other conditions do present similarly. Confirmation of a diagnosis informs management and is vital for research purposes. Much of the early literature on classical EDS is limited by the lack of laboratory confirmation of diagnoses. Thank you so much for watching. This was my video on classical EDS. Next time, I believe we are covering vascular EDS, so stay tuned for that. I already have my video about hypermobile EDS, so check that out in the description or wherever it is. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, comment. If you have classical EDS, I don't actually know anyone who has it, so if you have it, I would love to hear about your experience. And until next time, hoard those spoons, guys.